Hey guys, welcome back to Electro Horde. And today I want to talk about a subject which is flashcards and PCMCIA cards, the first kinds of expandable type of memory cards that were available for notebook computers, for laptops, for, for palm top PCs. And I want to focus today on linear flashcards, which they are a specific type of flash memory that, that first came out during the first years of, of mobile computing. And so the, I've shown you before here on the channel a few of these cards, some of this you actually haven't seen, but I'll just start talking about a little bit about all the different kinds that I have here. And then I'll focus on linear flashcards because I could not find a lot of information about this online. I had a hard time getting linear flashcards to, to read or to write on my devices. Uh, they cannot be used just like regular ATA cards as, as I'll explain later. So that's why I'm making this video to make life easier. I, I bet there's someone out there that somehow is facing uh, this, this kind of, of difficulty trying to get these cards to work. And that's why I decided to make this video. And also for you guys who never heard about linear flashcards, so you get to know that this thing does exist and how to get this working, right? So uh, let's start with the first card that I wanna mention about. You've seen this card before in the channel, I've used it before. This is what's called an SRAM card. This is non-persistent storage. I mean, it's non-persistent because it needs a battery to keep the data. So we will only retain the data uh, while the battery inside here, there's a compartment right here uh, that holds a battery. So only while the battery is working fine, this thing will retain whatever, whatever is written on it. This one is one megabyte, very low capacity. And some devices will only read SRAM kind of car, especially uh, the earlier mobile computing devices that had PCM CIA slots, uh, they, some of them will only accept this kind of card. This is not the focus on this video, I just want to introduce you to this card if you haven't watched my other videos when I talk about this one. So let's put it aside. Uh, and then uh, you have the first kind of PCM CIA persistent storage, which is this card, this one was even used on a, on a Cisco router, and this is a linear flash card, okay? So it, it's regular PCMCIA format. Uh, this one is also a linear flash card. This one also, these are two megabytes each one. Uh, this one is also two megabytes. Uh, this was also used in Cisco. Uh, most Cisco systems write right on the dawn of, 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 of PCMCIA storage cards, use this to hold the, the OS. You can even see the version of the OS that's right here, iOS 11.2. And the thing is, you cannot read these cards on regular PCMCIA is lost without a proper driver. That's the problem. I mean, let's put this aside for now. And if we take a look, Here's a very early uh, PCMCIA card from Hewlett Packard. Uh, this one is five megabytes, but this one is already an ATA card, which means that it will just work uh, most systems, most more modern systems. I mean, 1995, 1993 or so on, they will read uh, ATA cards just fine, no problem at all. Uh, you can see here we have a, 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 an even newer one. This one is 64 megabytes. It even says here ATA flashcard when ATA was finally defined as the standard for PCM CIA uh, storage media. And this is ATA. It doesn't say here anywhere, but this is also ATA, so it will just work fine. Uh, this compact flashcards also use the same ATA. Uh, format so they will just plug and play and you can read it on any laptop 
uh, that has a PCM CIA or a compact flashcard. You could use this kind of adapter to, to read a flashcard on a PCM CIA slot and they will just work. These cards will just work just fine. No problem, no issues. Let's put those aside too. And now let's focus on the, the topic, the subject that I want to talk about in this video. These are linear flashcards. These were the first kind of persistent storage PCM CIA uh, flash memories that ever existed. And they do not work right out of the box unless you get some Microsoft drivers to get this to be recognized on DOS and Windows. Right, so I had a hard time when I first got these cards. I, to be honest, I I wasn't really aware what these were. Uh, I'm I'm much younger than these cards, so I wasn't familiar with linear flashcards when they first came out. I was only aware of ATA flashcards, and I couldn't get this to read anywhere. And I thought I maybe I needed some special hardware to read them. Maybe they just wouldn't be pin-to-pin -pin compatible with regular uh, PCMCIA slots and computers and palm tops, but I was wrong, right? You can get this working and I will show you on this video. It's very simple how to get this working and how to read and write to these cards if you ever need to, uh, if you ever need to, 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 to get some information out of it, or even if you plan on using it somewhere, you could use this on your palm top. This works on the HP 200 LX that you've seen before here on the channel. I have one right here and it does work. Uh, not only it's physically compatible with regular PCM CIA slots as you can see, but the HP 200 LX can also recognize format read and write to these cards, right? So that's what I want to show you today. Uh, I could use a laptop, a regular laptop to show you this or just a regular desktop PC with a PCMCIA slot, but I'll just use the 200LX because I think it's much neater to show this cards working on such a portable device, right? So what, you, what you're seeing right here is just my computer screen. I have a compact flash card right here connected to it uh, through a SanDisk reader, a USB SanDisk reader, and on this compact flash card, I have a few important files, and this is where I keep the files for the drivers for this linear flash cards that, uh, that we're trying to get to work, right? So, let's just find these files, they're right here, and these are the files that you need. This two, they're called memcard.exe, and oh, you can't see the file names, sorry, <laughs> okay. Oh, now we can. Uh, they are called memcard.exe and msflash.sys. That's all you need to get these cards to work on the 200LX or any DOS-based uh, laptop computer or even on Windows. Uh, if you load this driver, uh, the, the card will work on Windows too. If you load this, this driver is on DOS before you load Windows. So, all you have to do, let's just open auto autoexec here. I mean, no, you don't need to, to change autoexec. You just need to change config sysi. So let's just open it up. Uh, here's the only line that you have to add to, to the config sys file, device equals C uh, slash ms flash dot sys. And that's all you need to load. Uh, you can see that I have an REM before here. You don't need that. That's because I, I disabled it uh, because I don't regularly use flashcards on my 200LX. So I just keep it disabled along with some other drivers that you may have seen before in the channel. This one, this first one is the driver for the parallel port on the 200LX. This is a driver for large uh, uh, ATA flashcards. So to get the linear flashcard working, all you need are those two files and this line or your config.sys file. And I'll get my 200LX here, I'll get this drivers working, uh, we'll reboot the 200LX, see if it can recognize the card, and I'll show you that this, the how to get this actually working, reading and writing to it. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so here I have the 200LX. 
I already have one of these linear flashcards inside its PCMCIA slot. Well, now let's just turn it on. Just ignore this, this beep, it just means that the backup battery is low. I have no backup battery installed on this, on this palm top. So let's restart. I already have the drivers load, the files loaded. As you can see here, it says Microsoft Flash File System version 2.00, uh, copyright 1989, 1992. It's a very early driver, right when these cards were actually uh, pretty, pretty common and the highest tech you could get for PCMCIA memory. And now the first thing we have to do is to format the card. So we have to run memcard.exe because this card is not formatted and to format it, you actually need this, this piece of software that comes with the driver. So uh, as you can see, it gives you a few options. It's just like a kind of F disk uh, specifically made for this card. So the first thing we're going to do is try number one. Number one is to create and format a new partition. So here's what we're gonna do. It recognized the card, as you can see, it's letter A type MS flash. It's unformatted and the size is two megabytes. So it's asking me if I want to use the entire card and I'll just say yes and hit enter. And now it is formatting the card and I don't know exactly how much time this thing is going to need to get the card formatted. So uh, if it takes a long time, I'll just skip and come back when it's finished. So you guys don't have to wait, right? So uh, enter number of spare blocks needed. I'll just skip it as one and hit enter. And let's see, enter volume label. I don't want any volume label. This operation may take some time. Do not remove the card from the slot while this message is displayed. So it just started formatting the card and could not erase probably because this card is write protected. That's something that I didn't tell you guys. Let's just see. Uh, this linear flashcards, they have this small switch that protects the card from being, uh, from being accidentally erased. So let me just try to move this. Let's see if it works. I don't remember if this thing is write protected or not. There's also no writing anywhere saying which position is which. So I don't know. We'll just try it here together. Okay, so let's hit ask because it didn't work. Let's try option number one again. Uh, let's hit enter. Okay. Uh, no, that's not the problem. Now it says it's write protected. So there's something wrong. Let's try this again. Let me remove the card once again. Let's just move it back to the original position. And let's hit ask. Let's try again number one. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. It should have worked, I believe. Uh, Let's just leave this in one. I don't want any volume label. Let's wait. Say that this operation could take some time. I hope it doesn't take too long. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. I don't know if that message about the backup battery, uh, probably it showed up during the, the, the formatting and it it just hangs the, the entire computer, so probably that's what happened. Uh, let's see if this card now works because it just returned to the main menu. So I believe it does work. Let's see A, let's hit directory and yes, it's working. So this time it worked, the card formatted just fine. What happened the first time was probably or the switch was in the middle position because I never touched that switch and it wasn't actually on the on the right protector, neither on the right enable or because the the the, the warning the this this two hundred LX that has that annoying warning when you don't have a backup battery inserted and it just hangs the entire computer and it just hangs all operation until you hit ask 
and the message showed up during the, the, the formatting, so it probably hang in and the, the software didn't like it. So now it's working. You can see that we can we can even copy a file. Let's see. Let's copy C uh, MS Flash dot sys to a so we're copying the the card driver into the card and you can see that one file was copied so now we can see what's inside the card and there it is there we have the ms flash dot sys file on the card and well guys that's it for today that's what i wanted to show you actually uh, i just wanted you guys to actually see that you could use this this linear flash cards on the HP 200, uh, you could get this this vintage, this old cards working. You can use them to store files on the 200 legs and to even get Windows working. Uh, if you need, you can install Windows 3.0 inside these cards as long as you have the MS Flash dot sys uh, configured correctly in your config sys file and boot it right from the 200 legs or from any other laptop computer that you have okay so thank you for watching that's all for today if you like the video please give it a thumbs up please leave any comments down below i'll be glad to answer them and please follow the channel if you like my content you can even suggest what you want to see here because i have all kinds of vintage tech electronics and mechanical that i want to make many more videos about it in the future okay so thank you very much for watching and see you next time bye bye